All right, we are live. It's been a while since we've done on one of these lunch with lovelies, but we are back on with attorneys, um, Amy Lawrence and Sarah Austin. Hi, ladies. Hey, Rainy. Hey. So we're on kind of for a special breaking news chat today. So tell us kind of what we found out last night. So last night, the verdict came back in the Russell uh, Lafitte fraud trial, federal fraud trial, and he was found guilty on all counts. Which is big news. I mean, tell folks if they're not quite sure who Russell Lafitte is, who he is. He was the CEO of Palmetto State Bank, who was doing basically all of the banking. He admitted on the stand to doing all the banking for PMPED mm -hmm. and like the law firm accounts, and as well as Alec Murdoch's personal accounts. Right. And he also was acting as conservator for a lot of these victims of Alec Murdoch, who Alec Murdoch's client, who then they, you know, stole the money through this bank. Yeah. So this trial went on for how long? Like a, a week and a half. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. About a week and okay. A half. Okay. Okay. Donna and Charleston. then, you know, through, I know we just, you know, released a um, Murdoch Carolina justice report um, last week that was kind of giving some updates and it was about the trial that had started for him and some of the details that were kind of coming out through his trial. Um, were there any new ones that came out since we spoke? Do you know? I mean, I think the biggest thing is, is that we heard uh, there was a recording of, and this is the recording we kept talking about in other, in other videos, but we learned that there was a recording of a board meeting at Palmetto State Bank and things were discussed. And I think Sarah probably wow. knows more details about that, but essentially they knew that he was stealing money and loaning money out of accounts and doing all kinds of really shady, horrible stuff. And everybody was just trying to minimize their liability in the situation. Wow. Yeah. And so from, from what I understand, I guess I wasn't surprised to hear his defense, which was, I just did what Alec told me to do. I think mm. we were all expecting him to say that. Yeah. I think the jury sort of saw through that because, you know, you can't get up there and say, I am the law firm's banker. I am Alec's personal banker. I am conservator of all of these people, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that that you were stealing. You were the one who was moving the money around and seeing where it went. So yep. if anybody knew exactly where the money was going, it's you because you mm -hmm. see all the accounts. Um, so I think the jury saw through that and I wasn't surprised by that. But what, what did come out for me at least was um, in 2021, I guess it was June or July 2021, mm -hmm. Russell talked about how the PMPED Pimped. Yeah. <laughs> CFO, the, the chief financial officer came to him and said, we think money's missing. We don't want any of it to be in writing. That was interesting. Which was a family friend or a family member of Russell Lafitte, right? Right. I think it's a sister. -in -law. So yeah. when they said money was missing, he said, we don't want to put this in writing. The law firm. Yeah. She testified. Uh, Janine, I'm not sure what her last name is. Starts yeah. With an S. Um, the judge kind of shut that down because it was hearsay, objection. So you didn't get to hear more about that. But then you mm. heard about the recordings. And so I guess after they found out money was missing from a victim, Arthur Badger, they tried to cover it up, all of them, the bank. And from what it sounds like, the law firm, too, all agreed to throw in money to pay Arthur Badger off, essentially, give him his money that was stolen back and sort of it was like one point three million dollars. Right. Yeah. I think the, ba the bank put in six hundred eighty thousand and the law firm put in six hundred eighty thousand. And then it was Russell Lafitte's understanding that the law firm was going to pay back Arthur Badger and not tell Arthur Badger what happened to the money or that the bank threw in any money. They were just going to give him a check for one point three million and, and say, oops, we you know, there was an accounting error and and you're owed this money, which is insane because it had been like 11 years. I think I might be wrong about the exact date, but I thought it was 2011 when that case was settled. Wow. And so it was. All that time, Alec and Russell Lafitte were moving his money around, and Arthur saw, I guess, none of it, or I don't even know if he saw any of it. Um, and then well, we know he didn't see one point three million of yeah. it, yeah, right. But he did not see a, a great deal of it if he saw any of it in the last yeah. ten years. And so, for me, that was interesting to yeah. implicate all the bank's board members, the bank's attorneys, and PMPD, knowing about all of this stuff, mm -hmm. right. and just sort of we're not going to throw the bank under the bus we're just going to get arthur to go away and then and then i would like to know what happened after that did they audit all of alex's accounts it doesn't feel like it no i mean sarah and i talked about this earlier 
you know, hypothetically, if something like this had happened in our firm, let's say Sarah took money, the first thing I would do is pull every file she ever put her hands on, right? Mm -hmm. And start digging through every one of them and making sure that every penny was accounted for, all that stuff. And the problem is, is instead we're seeing, we're not seeing uh, PMPED or, um, or even like law enforcement. We're not seeing them finding victims. We're seeing victims find attorneys. This, I mean, we're ha they're having to go to websites. We're having to, like, yeah, Justin Bieber credit to him is getting out there and trying to find all these victims mm -hmm. and saying, hey, if you were owed money, if you were ever a client of Alec Murdoch and you were owed money by him, call me. I'll help you get it. Wow. When really, it should be PMB, PED. If they know that he was stealing, should be they should have that list already. Combing through every file he's ever touched, going through every yeah. accounting, going through their trust account, all those things, and also it. I mean. This is what we, we've seen this before in other cases that we've had um, where the police are not trying to find the other victims, right? Yeah. So instead of them going in and making an audit or hiring a special, um, uh, what's the word, Sarah? Investigator? Prosecutor? Uh, um no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, y'all. Like judges will, we, we saw this in, um, you know, in the Trump case. They, they have like a, a, a special judge that comes in and determines whether or not something is wrong or right. Right. So we don't have anybody like because we know that there is attorney client privilege that we can't break. So the bar would be a great place to start. Um, and they come in and they look and they audit. And so we're not seeing that, though. We're seeing victims having to come out of the woodwork to see if they're they're victims at all. Mm. And so it, it's just really disheartening because no one's trying to find the other victims. Right. I guess. You know, what right. I mean? Well, and I know, you know, I was looking into a little bit of, of the trial and there was a lot of victims that testified. And so hearing those stories of how they were affected by this. Yeah. And I think it's crazy that their defense was, you know, I just did, or their Russell Lafitte's defenses. I just did whatever Alex told me to do because we, I mean, we know that he knew he was doing something wrong. He was like in the Pickney case, he was um, the conservator over Mr. Pickney. Well, Mr. Pickney had died and he still took a fee. He was still, he still called himself the conservator after he'd passed away, which that's not what he is anymore. That would have ended the moment Mr. Pickney died. And he's sitting there taking um, a fee off of his accounts. That's just insane to me. Yeah. I mean, he was an active participant. He knew better than anybody what, what was going on. Um, and then, then he, they, you know, they try to make the argument that what he did wasn't illegal because he had the right to loan out money um, as a conservator. And that is the case. You can loan out money, but loans require documents, payback schedules, interest rates, mm -hmm. not a post-it note or something inside somebody's head. So that's what makes it in collateral. And we see none of those things. It was yeah. just a big old Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, um, they were stealing from Peter to pay for stolen Paul. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they were just stealing more money to pay back the old money. And then eventually the house, of cards crumbled. Well, and we're talking about, so the six charges that, that he was found guilty on is conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud. Um, count two was bank fraud. Count three was wire fraud. Uh, four was misapplication of bank funds. And that was four, five, and six. So break this down for me a little bit. Why? What are all these misapplication of bank funds? Like, why are those three separate charges? Is it separate cases? I, ha I haven't read all. Yes, there's different. Um, it's different acts, but it's also different because um, he was a conservator of um, the two women who were little girls when their, when her mom and brother died, um, uh, the Pickney, Mr. Pickney, like the list goes on and those are the victims usually. Gotcha. I haven't, I don't, I don't know exactly on the, so those are indictments. each kind of like victim. Right. And the prosecutors will oftentimes, at least what we deal with, you know, your clients might be accused of doing a lot of things, but the prosecutors are going to focus on the cases where they've got all the proof mm -hmm. and they've got the victim's participation ready for trial and things like that. So these are probably the charges linked to the prosecutor's best case. Right. Yeah. So do we know what he's been sentenced to yet? Or is that still to come? He hasn't been sentenced and that will, that is to come. Okay. We know that he, he could get up to 30 years for each charge. Do, will wow. that happen? No, it won't happen. They anticipate that he'll probably get around 12 years, maybe a little more, a little less. Mm. Um, and then the question will be is, will the prosecutors go after obstruction of justice because he lied in his, um, 
I mean, it, it's come to light that he was not truthful in his proffer agreement. And a proffer agreement is when you sit down with the government and you say, I'm going to tell you everything and I'll get some lenience um, down the road because I'm trying to do the right thing. You know, I've been caught, but I'm doing the right thing. Which is not something to lie on. Well, you know, right. it's like the, you know, I don't know. This okay. is the one time in life you should like just verbally vomit at all. If you're, yeah. gonna, if you're going to bother to do it, you've got to do it. You've got to be all in. Yeah. And instead he held back and didn't tell and lied and a bunch of other stuff. It's just insane to me. I mean, is that a charge on its own? Like, can that be? Yeah, absolutely. So that, okay. Interesting. It, it also, it, from what I understand, I did not get to see any of his testimony and federal uh, people don't understand this, but federal trials are not allowed to be televised. Um, you can't have cameras. It's a big deal to even get your phone into a, oh, I didn't know that um, yeah. So we just, you have reporters and then they go into a reporter room and then that's why you see like these mm -hmm. mad Twitter um, feeds of like just bits and pieces of information. And then you'll have like an article at the end of the day um, or report, but it, everyone I know that was in that courtroom um, said that he, Russell Lafitte came off as arrogant, um, rude, disrespectful, and took absolutely no responsibility in any of his, in, in any of his um, partaking in any of this mess. It was just, it wasn't me. I did everything he told me to do. Well, you know, you're a smart guy and we can see by the yeah. paper trail that that's not the case. You knew exactly what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. if anybody else knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. And guys, we're live. So if anybody wants to comment or ask questions, feel free. Thomas, I see you on there saying he's he's happy to see us. Um, so nice to uh, hear from you. But we are live. If you have questions or comments about this, we can kind of answer that as we are chatting here. Um, but, you know, what what does his trial? Well, actually, let me back up. I have another question. Did they give you any feedback on what his reaction was when he was found guilty for anything for everything? I think he was, from what I understand, he was shocked, which I find that goes back to the arrogance thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He really thought he had this thing beat. And I think that they really thought if the, how they were going to have it beat was, and this is just some insight of just talking to some of our friends um, that are on the ground down there, is that the prosecutor admitted that he was allowed to loan money, right? Um, which is true. But loans, like I said, uh, have terms and collateral and all these different mm -hmm. things and payback schedules, and none of those things were in place. And they really thought that the technicality of he was allowed to loan money mm -hmm. was going to be like their their winning punch. Right. And I think it was so much more than just the loans. And it was like you're loaning to Alec. I mean, when I read about his defense, obviously, none of us could watch it, but um, it was just like, well, Alec. Alec was my neighbor and the Murdochs are the law in Hampton County. Yeah. And I think this trial, Whoa. he said that. They yeah, he are said the that. Law, wow. Which I think speaks to, and I mean, I watched the HBO series too. Mm -hmm. And and the people, you know, you have all the way up from the CEO of Palmetto State Bank down to just the people who live in Hampton County who are on the documentary, just regular community members saying that the Murdochs are the law in Hampton County. And so I think he really thought that. I can't get in trouble for doing this stuff because Alec Murdoch told me to do it mm -hmm. and he's the law. He's got a badge and everything. And I don't, I think that is how people feel, but wow. that, I think this trial and this verdict signifies like now uh, the feds are the law. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and you know, if you've done anything wrong, you, your excuse to blame it on the Murdochs is not, it's not going to cut it. Yeah. Well, this is the deal. I, I under, I understand people, right. I get how somebody like, let's say Eddie Smith, right? Mm -hmm. If he were to say that, that's a guy with a sixth grade education, mm -hmm. uh, lives in like a little, little tiny house trailer, you know, that kind of thing. If he were to say that, I, I could buy into it, right? I could, I could get that. But here is a man who uh, is crazy educated, um, the CEO, chief um, executive officer of a, a, a large bank, um, and is super rich. And he's participating in all and in, in reaping the benefits of of the crimes. So that falls on deaf ears. And the thing is, it might be a technicality. Remember, we had this whole discussion, but juries will go with how they feel about something and everything about this feels wrong. So whether a technicality says that it is or it isn't, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't feel like what they were doing was right. And that's what they're going to go with. Plus, I think with the conservatorship, now I don't know this law but I remember from the bar, you're a fiduciary, right? So yeah. you can loan money and make loans if it's going to benefit, if it's in the best interest of the conservatorship. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to go into that with good intentions, thinking this is actually going to bring these girls money. Yeah. This is going to bring the victim money. It's going to be good for this conservatorship in the long run. 
I don't think, and I would like to see how the defense was going to argue that. I mean, this loaning money to Alec and then all that stuff was making them money. Like, and then th there was nothing to support that. In the same breath, this asshole is telling her she can't go on her like like high school band trip because it's too expensive. And she was living in a car. Yeah, she had nowhere to and live. And he didn't know that with all this money. It's just. It makes me so angry. Yeah, the ignorance card that he tried to pull was just like you it's bullshit you are not ignorant right mm -hmm. you've got everything right in front of you more than i mean we would all love to see those books i'm sure the victim's attorneys would all love to see those books yeah um i have sure. um, a comment from beverly just now does his attorneys have a leg to stand on with an appeal due to the juror confusion last night yeah beverly that's a great 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 question um so most people don't know this, but so there's 12 people on that jury and they had an issue um, around seven o'clock last night. I think like at hour eight, hour seven, hour eight of deliberation. There was 11 hours of deliberation and they came out and said that I think it was the word combative used. I don't know. It was something like along the, there was a jury member that was combative and um, there was an issue and the judge pulled that um, juror along with another juror that was having an issue into chambers and talked to him one-on-one -on -one, and he released both. And we know that one of them had um, a medical issue that needed to take some medicine that was very, very important. Um, and it, there was a time constraint on it. And so that juror was um, released as well as this combative or whatever the word they used um, juror. And then two substitutes were, were put in because they'd watched the whole trial mm. Um and so then they came back within an hour or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two hours after that. They came in. Yeah. Pretty quickly with a, a guilty on all accounts. If I am the defense attorney, I'm not happy with that. I was going to say, is that? No, I think that's a, a huge, huge if I'm a criminal issue. defense attorney. That's a huge issue. Flag. Yeah. But I don't know how the court's going to rule on appeal. I mean, you don't. I mean, appeals take years. And it's going to depend on the actual, and I don't know the actual facts. I heard someone say that the alternates were excused and then they brought them back. If the alternates were excused and left like went the home room and started Googling a bunch of stuff. That's one thing. And then came back. That's, that's definitely like not good. No, but um, if they were sitting in the courtroom and they weren't actually excused, I don't know. And put into a separate room, which I have a feeling that's what it, what yeah. happened i think when they then say I that they were excused just depends what excused means i guess what the definition of excused is in this situation where were the alternates i think it really would depend on where were the alternates right. what did they hear who were they talking to or were they just in the courtroom you know secluded for those hours and they could then i think that's totally fair yeah that's why you have alternates they sat through the whole trial yeah well i mean how long do we know until like, what does he do between now and the sentencing? Is he in jail? Is he home? Like, on he, so he's on an ankle monitor, both a federal and state ankle monitor. Gotcha. So, um, I'm assuming he will go home until sentencing. Um, and you know, they'll file a notice of appeal and all that stuff, and do a motion to reconsider sentencing afterwards. But he will usually in federal cases, there's not a sentencing. So, in South Carolina, in state court, you would normally have like in general sessions, the minute you're found guilty. Um, there's a rare occasion where a judge will put it off because he really wants to think about something or she wants to think about what the most appropriate thing is. And I love that when they do that, because it means that the judge is really thinking through it um, on what's the appropriate punishment in a situation. But usually 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're found guilty of murder, then, or whatever, you're sentenced immediately. Like mm -hmm. we roll right into sentencing and mitigating factors and all that stuff. But in federal court, their sentencing guidelines. And the question is, where does he fall in those guidelines? You know, you've got upward departures and downward departures. If you plead guilty, you get a, a downward departure. So you get to shave off some time because you took responsibility for what you did. Um, and there's things that, you know, that can get you more time depending on criminal history and stuff like that. So where you fall in those guidelines um, will all come into play. So it, it'll yeah. be really exciting to watch it all kind of like unfold and well, yeah, and I'm reading some comments from um, Lynn, who says, why after all these years when a law firm has a partnership that what you are saying is there were no checks and balances and other partners did not know what was going on? Something is not right with others that work there, including whoever was doing their Account. financials, I think is what that's supposed to CFO, say, yeah. et cetera. And no one can tell me that there is not more that need that needs people, basically more people need to come down with this. Everyone I, at that firm should be suspended. Lynn, I'm with you. Um, 
in so much that I don't know if they need to be suspended, but this is what I know. At the very least, they need to be looked at. And I mean, I'm all for due process for everybody, but I think that it it is insane to me to think that no one knew what was going on. It just doesn't make any sense. Nothing about it smells right. I mean, we know what happens in this office and we've been to trust school. It, the bar provides like a little class that you could take on exactly the checks and balances that have to happen to make sure every penny is accounted for. And there's just no way that other people didn't know what was going on. And it floors me, blows my damn mind at the thought that a CFO, that all this was going on and uh, the CFO did not know about it yet. She, and all this happened under her nose and they kept her on as the CFO after all this. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't pass the smell test for sure. <laughs> no. And I think at a minimum, at a minimum, Alex accounts, all of them need to be audited. Mm -hmm. Every client he's had and every transaction that went through him. You need, feel like that would have been done already. It, and I, I wonder if it has, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, we got attorney client pri pri privilege, <laughs> the bars involved. Um, but you'd think that that would have been done already. Yeah. At least internally. Well, the, the reason why I think that it has not is because we keep finding victims that are coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. You know what I mean, people are still calling Bamberg uh, and saying something wasn't right. And this is this is what happened to me. And he's having to demand, he and Bland and Richter and all of them are having to demand, you know, uh, an accounting of things. So one would think that if they'd already done all this stuff, then we would know exactly there would be no more victims. We know about all of them. And there there still wouldn't be some coming out of the woodwork. Right. And like Amy and I were talking about earlier, say I was stealing from clients, which I would never. never. But say that I Ever. was, you know, to clear her name, because you are innocent until proven guilty. But with the bar, you've got to provide that accounting. They're tracking everything you do. So if Amy and Justin are going to say, Sarah was the criminal. We had no idea about it. They would go through all my files and say, here's all the people she stole from. And we can't believe we missed it. And we're so sorry. And we're going to pay them back or figure out how to do it to We're protect make them right. Yeah. And really make it right and distance yourself from that. I think too. And from this trial, we learned that a lot more people knew about it. I mean, he was, he was talking about Ronnie Crosby by name. He named the, the people at the law firm that they talked about paying off Arthur Badger. So how many more Arthur Badgers are there? Um, and Ronnie testified at trial and how many, how many people deep does it go? I mean, because mm -hmm. we know it goes years deep. And so who else was involved? And I think that that needs that needs to be done. But if you watch our past Carolina justice reports, I mean, we've been calling for this from this has made no sense from the beginning. No, right, right. Well, and that scares me too, as, as how many people we learn just continue to be involved in this. I mean, I feel like these trials could go on forever with different people. I mean, after Russell Lafitte, is there somebody else from the bank that can go up for charges well, or no, no one else has been charged from the bank. I think that the feds are going to be looking extra hard now, especially after all the testimony that they heard. Right. At, at the very least, they're going to be pressured to take a hard look at everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think less than, I mean, I don't want to see anybody go to prison. I'll say that honestly, but um, we don't like anybody. At going least to prison. not even to pursue criminal charges, but to make sure that all these victims are identified and paid back as much as they can be. Right. right? Because now we know there's nothing left. They're trying to find money to pay all these families. And so the penalty needs to be restitution to all these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a couple um, of questions from Beverly and Lynn. Again, thank you ladies for um, chiming in here. Beverly wants to know, does he um, still face state charges? He does. He is still facing state charges. I don't know if they'll pursue him or not. Um, that will be usually when the feds get a hold of something, the state will let their charges go, but they just, um, they keep them there just to, to keep a, a lock on them just to, hold something over their head, I guess, for some leverage. Mm -hmm. And now that the federal uh, cases went forward and, and they might keep them, especially now that we might have a, a possible appellate issue, they might keep them and go forward. We'll yeah. just have to see. And then Lynn's asking, um, do we know if he has offshore accounts? That's the thing about offshore is, I mean, that's why people, you know, get them because no, there's no accounting, right? The feds don't have any reach to those. They might, they might not. We just don't know. Yeah. We don't I know. Hope so. I hope someone finds them. God, what, wouldn't that be awesome <laughs> that we could get the money back and be able to pay all these people back? That would be great. Because this is the deal. It We, we take this very personal because of what we do for a living. We're lawyers. And so, you know, our entire career is helping people. Like that's why we got into this game to incite change and to do good things for people. And, and when you're dealing with personal injury clients, these are people who've been hurt in the most 
horrific ways. Their whole lives have been turned upside down. You know, Mr. Pickney was um, paralyzed. You know, th these are the word. you know, these people, their lives have been turned upside down and, and these are not rich people, right? Mm -hmm. So their lives have changed dramatically because of their injuries. They haven't been able to make house payments and all this other stuff. And they've worried about Christmas for their kids and Thanksgiving dinners and whether or not going to be food on, food on the table. And so to see these rich assholes who were put in charge of doing right by them to take their money and for their lives not to not only not be any better, but to be worse because of it just really just eats my ass up. Yeah. yeah, because this is such a position of trust. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so for lawyers to be breaching that trust, at least like so egregiously, because to get a $1.3 million settlement, you so have to hard. be really hurt. Yeah. You know, that's not a person who's out working totally fine now. Um, that's a very injured person whose life has probably been totally derailed. Yeah. And so it's just a gigantic breach of trust as to like the whole profession and everything that we stand for. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We really, love, we really love being lawyers. <laughs> we love it. We love helping people. And so when somebody comes in and puts a stain on something that we do and love, it just makes us really Yeah, you know, I mean, angry. and we're in such a position to change people's lives and fight yeah. for them and change their lives in such a positive way that that breach of trust and to be taking from injured people is just like, you know. Well, and there's the also worst. that stigma of lawyers, you know, right. the persona of lawyers oh, yeah. and a lot of these bad lawyers that that make a bad name for good lawyers that are out there like you guys trying to help people genuinely and so it's just kind of i feel like that makes me so mad makes you more even more mad because right. you guys are out there doing good and here's somebody who is using it for their benefit and and making a bad name for all lawyers um so I don't know, but folks, we are um, live right now. A few of you have sent in questions and comments, which we love. Yeah. We have um, recorded on our Carolina Justice Report, which is a show on YouTube, and we post it on Facebook and everywhere else. But we have, gosh, what, about seven or eight episodes that have followed the Murdoch murder um, case and, and details from the beginning. So uh, feel free to watch those. We have kind of details about every little step of the way. Yeah. I was just thinking also some new stuff that came through is um, Alec Murdoch gave his alibi. He did. He did. He produced his alibi and it wow. is uh, a shitty one. <laughs> what is it? Do we know? Um, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but the it's, I guess they said the murders happened. Was it between eight 30 and 10 oh six or whatever um they said he leaves moselle at nine so he matches up with what we heard about there being a video of him leaving mm -hmm. at nine and we know that they were all videotaped at the dog kennels around right. 8 45 or whatever it was so it does leave that part unaccounted for mm -hmm. and then he calls everybody he's calling cops he's calling chris wilson who's another attorney he did business with so so nobody actually can physically see him and put him in a spot but apparently he talked to a bunch of people on the phone he made yeah and he made like five phone calls within like a five minute period yeah it's just it's wild and yeah. it doesn't account for for me i i'm interested to see what the case is and the evidence against him because he leaves you know we see them at the dog kennels and then we see him leave so many minutes later and it's like well then that's really narrowing down the time where they probably died were killed if he was involved in it then that mm -hmm. really narrows down the time to where they were killed yeah yeah it's not a good one well and um beverly asked i know you already kind of answered this but she was saying how, yeah. realistically how much time do you see him being sentenced with i think he'll get sentenced around 12 to 15 12 12 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you agree sarah I think that's about right. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know that I, much about the federal guidelines for this kind of stuff. So everything I read, he's looking at 30 years for all of them, but I think he'll end up getting like 12 to 15. Um, and, and I will say this, like, I want y'all to understand the kind of prison that he's going to go to. It is not going to be like the prison we have seen on TV, right? It's not going to be like Oz, HBO. It is going to be Martha Stewart. I call it CEO prison, white collar. Really? Yeah. 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 He will, he'll go to a very comfy place which makes me even more mad. And why is that? Because it's so high it's profile? A, it's a white collar crime. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that they did that. Mm -hmm. So depending on the crime, you go to specific prisons. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so I mean, they put all the violent offenders in the same place, which is why that prison is so bad. Right. Um, Cause you've got all the, all the most violent people. Right. Supposedly. In the same place. So Russell Latif will probably, uh, Lafitte will probably come back a better, uh, a better businessman. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> he might learn how to do some more crime. Yeah. Man. Or he'll and a better it. thief when it's all said and done. Now, are there any other trials that we are waiting on or to be scheduled other than um, Alex? I don't think so. No, Alex, we're looking at, I mean, they're still pushing for that January, um, that January date for the, for the murder and, and all the fraud cases to go forward. Um, I don't, Eddie Smith, Eddie Smith will be some after, I think after Alec, I'm sure. Yeah. If I understand there's, they're filing like motions to compel and stuff in that case, um, just to get the evidence, the full evidence discovery. Um, and that's one of the things that we saw with, um, Alec Murdoch's, defense attorneys um they're pushing they're pushing for this january date but they need all the discovery right right um and one of the issues that they had is uh the feds had asked which i, I agree with dick carpoolian on this so alvin glenn which is where he is being housed will not allow him but like certain hours and through glass and stuff to review his discovery and things like that with his attorney and if they won't let him have his discovery in his cell because they're saying it's so confidential, confidential then I, I, mean, I just don't think that does a disservice to a criminal client, like a defendant, mm -hmm. because they need access to their own discovery. They need to see it. They need to be able to touch it, feel it, highlight it, go through it, all those things, because having, you know, it's, it's their life that's mm -hmm. in it. Just like if he was representing himself, he would need it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think he has a right to that. And so to, to ask him to only have access to this stuff, like, a, like an hour or so a day is just, I think is a disservice no, he to needs anybody. To have it at all times, all the time. Yeah. I mean, because if he, you know, I keep always like to keep in mind that maybe he didn't like, I'm so excited to see the evidence come out so I can, I mean, we're hoping he did not. I mean, I, mine if, is my prayer that he did not yeah, kill his wife and child is innocent until proven guilty. And he's got a right to look at all that stuff all the time and sleep on it and think about back to where was I and, and come take up, notes. Nobody knows his case better than him. And he's mm -hmm. got to be able to help his attorneys defend him and so to only give him limited access just to me seems like a gigantic constitutional violation huge like the most egregious yeah well and jenny Wen just um wrote in that she said that she thinks the mallory beach case date has changed from january 9th do we know anything about that i haven't heard anything about that but I'm that would sure. not surprise me at all mm -hmm. um i think that there i think the argument was is that it needed to be pushed after after the murder trial. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look it up though. We can, we can, but that thanks not for have... letting us know. Yeah, no, thank you. And I, I think that that's probably the best thing. Um, hey, let's handle this murder thing first and then we go forward. Yeah. I did. Uh, I did read about, uh, there's been an affidavit that was given by the re the, so in the, in the beach case, Parker's from what I understand after looking through all this stuff, Parker's hired this guy who his name's Roman something. I think his name is he, they hired this guy who's a blogger and he mainly blogs about things that are like, like middle East mm -hmm. conflicts and stuff like hmm. that. And in order to hide behind, in order to hide behind a, like reporter, mm -hmm. like, you know, like first amendment, they don't have to disclose things. They hire this guy to be a reporter about the Mallory beach case. So he can go and seek things. And he is the one who Parker's gave the pictures of Mallory beach's mm -hmm. body to, and he provided those to the documentary wow. the lady doing the documentary. Um, but when I read, when I was reading all that and listening to a lot of stuff about that, it made me even more, angry with Parker's mm -hmm. and the owner of Parker's because it is so convoluted. Um, we also learned that they hired, uh, Parker's hired two um, private investigators who went to Stephen Smith's mother. This is like makes me so angry. Goes to Stephen and says, I can't tell you who hired us, but we want to help you find out who killed your son. So like this has given her some kind of hope that there will be some justice for the death of her little boy. And she give and they're like, we need all the electronics that he had. That way we can kind of comb through it and just try to like piece this together. She gives it all to him. And we later learn that it was Parker's who hired these guys. And their ultimate goal was to try to tie 
Buster Murdoch to Stephen Smith as gay lovers. This is insane to me because that would, because people in South Carolina would want to blame because Buster is also because it was his ID is named in that lawsuit to try to put that off on him. Like that, they, they, that they would not like him more and try to give him more. That's like the sickest shit I've ever heard of. That's it's insane. Terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. And they, and, and, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think that when a jury hears what Parker has done, they are going to equate him to what Alex, um, uh, What's his name? My brain can't think today. COVID got me all. I've I had COVID and like words just don't come back to me anymore. Um, Truth Wars or whatever. What's his name? Alex Jones. Jones. This will be a verdict like Alex Jones. Sorry, y'all. Info Wars. Um, and I think that th there will be a, pr they will pay the most hefty of price for what they have done to that family, to I the just, Beach family. Yeah, I'll and say Steven it once and I'll say it again. I do not understand why they did not just immediately write a check to Mallory Beach. I don't get it either. It just doesn't make sense why they decided and, to drag and this And I hope like that this. you guys realize. So that does, It just does not make sense. Instead of just doing the right thing, now Parker is hiring, law. He, they've hired lobbyists um, to try to convince our legislature to not hold – to, to, to amend the laws and change the laws to not hold people who serve people underage, dram shop laws, just that serve people underage, that overserve, to not hold them as accountable and to limit the liability. So if, you're, uh, if your family is killed by a drunk driver, it would limit your liability, the, the amount you could go after the bar that overserved them. So there would never, ever really be any justice for that bar who did something horrible or that gas station or whatever. It's insane to me. I mean... I just, I, they could have, I'm sure, I don't know for sure what Mallory Beach's attorneys have done, but they're very good lawyers. So I'm sure they sent a letter that said, pay us everything and we will sign this covenant not to execute or whatever it is. And we will be done with this. Um, and they release just, and confidentiality. And, yeah. Instead of compensating the family because they, they, Parker's served Paul. It's on camera. It's on camera. Um, and they should not have served Paul. And so an ID didn't even say Paul's name on it. And it didn't look like Paul. I mean, the difference between Buster and Paul and we're in him. It's about six inches also in height. Where everybody oh, knows everybody. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just don't. I just, to go these lengths is just insane to me. They've got to be self-insured or looking at bankruptcy or I don't know what the reason is for not just having this be over with already. Well, I feel like somebody's got to be well, like in his ear advising him on. No, some I think sort no. Of I think I think that's mm -hmm. what happens when you surround yourself with a bunch of yes men. Like nobody's looking at you saying, "Have you lost your Have you lost your damn mind?" Right, right. right. This is not a good look for us. But instead, everybody's doubling down and they're not doing. I'm a big fan of we do the right thing. You know, we all make mistakes. Parker's made a mistake by by selling alcohol to a kid and somebody ended up dead. Right, mm -hmm. and we can understand that people make mistakes because that's life. But I, what, I, what you will not be forgiven for is to do all these things to try to hurt a family and to hurt people. It's like you cannot like Buster all day long, but that is a young man whose mom and brother who were brutally murdered, right? His whole life has been turned upside down. And whether you like him or not, he didn't deserve that. Mm -hmm. He didn't, I didn't even know about that. that. It's just Beach about family just doesn't deserve just any of it. Being a defense attorney and looking at this and being like, well, do we want to? We We did the wrong thing. I mean, I don't need to see any more evidence to know that Parker served Paul. You're not allowed to serve minors alcohol. You're liable. The end. That's it. Yeah. Period. Um, as a defense attorney, I don't know how, and or they're just not taking the advice of their attorney. Oh, I have a feeling they're just not taking their advice. I don't know attorneys. as Parker's why you want to open yourself. You want to keep changing. Why, yeah. Why do you want to open yourself up to this liability? Why do you want to be involved in a murder saga? Like the, the Parker's had nothing to do with, Paul and Maggie's death or Russell Lafitte or any of this stuff. But we're over here talking about them like they're a part of it all. And every time I see a Parker's now, I'm just like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> yep, this is not good marketing. This is not good for your finances. This is I just, love Circle K now. Who yeah, this thought? is just really <laughs> not good coffee. for anybody, you know. So I'm just like, even right thing or not. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is now we've equated – in this situation, Parker's with Alex Murdoch, they're, they they suck equally, right? Right. It's like in your in your best self interest as Parker's to pay this and make it go away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now it's too late. I'm sure yeah. they've already they've burned those gone too far. Through those yeah. demands and it's on now. So which oh, it's, deservedly. It's so. definitely on like Donkey Kong. De deservedly so. But. Yeah. One thing, kind of going back to the Russell Feet trial, that when you all were saying that people 
witnesses or, or um, victims were saying that they are the law, the Murdochs are the law. I would be interested in like knowing the Murdochs family history of how they like rose to this type of status in that area. They do a good job on the HBO documentary. Do they? they? do a great job. Yeah. I mean, they've been, they have been the solicitor for over a hundred years, right? Yeah. Wow. A hundred years. That's insane. Mm -hmm. That's generations. Yeah. you got to watch that documentary. It's pretty good. It's, um. Yeah. I do need to. It's talk really, about, really good. They talk about like seeing Maggie in the grocery store and just like how they felt about all that kind of stuff. It's just, it, it's a different world, I feel like. Yeah. It's really like the Southern Wild Wild West. It, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm Beverly saying, wait now, I'm hearing a conservatorship in Russell's cake case. Would this be accurate? Do we know anything about this? What do you mean a conservator? I don't know. It says, wait now, I'm hearing a conservatorship in Russell's case. Would this be accurate? Well, we know he was competent. I don't, I don't, I don't know what uh, we mean by that because I haven't heard about it. And I'm sorry, I don't know anything about that. But yeah, Beverly, let us let us know. You know what you saw. I mean, there's no that. conservator over. I mean, he's competent to stand trial. He got up there and testified. No one, he didn't say that he was insane or mentally incompetent. Or, that's the only time a conservator would kick in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, Beverly, let us know. Now, if Palmetto State Bank went under a conservatorship, that wouldn't surprise me. If like the FDIC came in and the feds came in and, and put them under a conservatorship, it wouldn't surprise me, but I haven't heard anything about that. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. There's a lot of different meanings to conservatorships and different kinds in this case. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and Thomas is saying that sad that this may all be true. It has happened before for many decades. Hope it gets better someday. You know, Thomas, I, we say this all the time. The only way... That of which we do not acknowledge, we cannot change, right? So if we don't acknowledge that the system is broken, then mm -hmm. we can't ever change it. And that's the kind of like the part that I think that most attorneys in the public are, and in the, in the press, or at least some of those in the press, instead of saying, wait, like if this can go on for a hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. And like this one family can be in power for a hundred years and this can happen for like over a decade in this one firm, then like maybe we're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. Well, like, what do we like? Maybe we need to fix it. And so, but we have to have a system that's willing to acknowledge that it's broken in order to fix it. Right. If not, it's just going to be the same old, same old, and we're going to be dealing with it. You know, there'll be another Alex Murdoch. Hmm. Justin is saying he thinks she meant receivership. Oh, like a receivership of the and bank? Beverly or said to keep track of funds. No, definitely. I mean, there might be a receivership because he has a big farm. What he, is he a actually, receivership? What is that? So, what happens is, is if you are, um, there's a couple different kinds of receivership. You've got bankruptcy, bankruptcy receivership, and you've got receiverships that you know if there's a pending lawsuit, or that way you can make sure that Russell Lafitte and his family don't dump assets, right, mm -hmm. and put them and, and use the money for something else or put it in an offshore account or whatever. And we're not saying that they're going to do that, but that's always the concern. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's lawsuits against him and the bank that they would put a receivership on his assets that kind of like it locks them down so people can't get rid of anything. Right, and this would be. More for Russell Lafitte's civil liability. Right. Interesting. Or restitution. Hmm. Would they do it for restitution? I don't, I don't know about restitution, but I know definitely for any pending lawsuit, yeah. especially when you've got somebody of that kind of clout and that kind of money. I mean, he was a millionaire. Right. Mm. Did he have a family? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So do they? He was related to most of the people that testified <laughs> at his trial. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Does the family get any kind of um, punishment? Are they having funds removed from them or anything like that? Well, that's that would be an issue. So let's say him and his wife own their home and they've owned it for 30 years. If that goes into receivership where they hold on to it just to see what, you know, to make sure nobody dumps it or whatever, then she's out her asset, right? Yeah. Until they unlock it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happened to Alec and all of yeah. his stuff, which is why Buster is. Yeah. You hear them talk on prison calls about John Marvin taking care of in, in, in code, moving money around, but. His assets are locked up. So it will affect his family if his assets are locked up for sure. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Well, we appreciate you guys weighing in today. Um, there's a lot of you guys. We've got 52 on here watching right now. So that's awesome. We love your questions and your comments. So keep those coming. Please. We are live right now. Um, if you are watching from like YouTube and you're not local, we are out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So we are um, South Carolinians talking about this in South Carolina. It's right down the road from us. And so um, – we have a little bit of a uh, yeah. Every time we go somewhere, it, right? We, yeah, we. Were, I was just in Orlando. Uh, we took our kids to Disney, and I was in line waiting. And you know, small talk with other moms, like, "Oh, where are you from?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm from South Carolina." Oh my God, do you know anything about the Murdochs? I'm like, "Oh Lord, do yeah. I? Do I?" 
Oh, I've only like, recorded eight. How much eight time episodes. we got? How much, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, line we got here? We yeah. Got, oh, an hour. I can tell you everything you need to know. God, yeah. I hate that for us though. Like that's not what I want. Like Parker's pay them. Yeah. <laughs> Parker's <laughs> like, pay get them. us all out of this. Yeah. 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 And so we have recorded about seven or eight episodes all about the the Murdoch uh, murders and details as they have kind of come about um, from the beginning. I mean, even before I came along, you guys were doing it before. I started being on these with you. So it's been a while since it started. I mean, I guess it's only been a little over a year, but it feels like so much longer. Um, but go and watch those if you get a chance on YouTube. Um, yeah. And if y'all have any questions, like throw it out there. We're willing to talk about anything for yeah, sure. Yeah. So what happens now? I always like to ask that kind of. Now we wait. Towards the end. <laughs> um, we wait for the sentencing of Russell Lafitte. We wait for um, this pending murder trial that'll, that we're hoping will go for in fourth in January. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I doubt that I, that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, so I've been doing quickly. this for, I've been a lawyer for 15 years and if it goes down in January, it'll be the most efficient speedy use of trial. judicial. <laughs> yeah. Speedy, speedy trial, trial we've ever seen. We'll actually see what a speedy trial actually looks like. Yeah. And then who else do we think is going to get pulled into this for trials? I mean, I don't know. They haven't really, from what I can tell, there's more to be investigated. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't really say that I hope more people are criminally charged. Sure. I hope not. But I hope they get to the bottom of it and find all the victims, at least start identifying who those people are and mm -hmm. taking steps, like Amy said, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, can these Whatever victims that looks like. ever get money now that now that that money has been like stolen and squandered like do they have any hope to regain any of that funds any of those? so yeah the, so malpractice insurance kicks in but i'm sure they've probably already hit that ceiling um the good thing about pmpd is that they are a very 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 successful law firm with very very deep pockets mm. and so that's what they've been doing they've been paying it out of pocket mm. so uh, you know everybody needs to come forward if, if you believe that you could have possibly been a victim, you know, look into it, call an attorney, even if it's just your local attorney, call us. We'll help, we'll help point, point you in the right direction uh, because you deserve better mm -hmm. for sure. So then, I mean, we'll know we'll have, um, we'll have um, Eddie, we'll eventually have Eddie Smith's um, trial. We'll have Alex trial. We'll have who else has been charged in all this mess. We'll have the Mallory Beach civil case mm -hmm. and, and all the other are these all federal and then trials? No, 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 no okay. they're all state. Up this point. So we'll Corey be able Fleming. to see these yeah. live if we wanted to. Yeah. So we'll see uh, Corey Fleming's go forward. Has he gotten yet? He hasn't gone yet. No, he has not. Um, so we'll see what's going to happen with him. Wow. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody who knew him and I was like, what? Because I don't I don't know any of these people. I mean, I know of them because we see them at trial lawyers and things like that and conferences and a bunch of I mean, Alec was head of of the trial lawyers um convention forever and group, um, and people from part uh PMPD. Um, but I don't know them, you know what I mean? We just know of them. And I ask people about them all the time, like when I meet people who are in that area, and the, and they all say that Corey Fleming was just the nicest guy you would have never seen it coming. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. That's interesting. That Very is interesting. interesting. Um, Alan chimed in and said, Has your law firm interacted with Alec Murdoch's firm? And if so, what are your thoughts? I don't think so. I mean, I I have uh, I consulted um, one of their attorneys who did a lot of um, defamation cases and libel cases um, on a case that I had um, that they had referred me to. Uh, I think phew, that was probably five six years ago. Mm -hmm. It was an attorney way before firm. all this. Yeah, just made a phone call and asked some questions to see if this was even a possible libel case because defamation and libel here in South Carolina is just really really hard. Those are those cases are really hard. Yeah. So if you if you know of a lawyer who's been successful in them, you start picking up the phone and calling them. Yeah. Aside from seeing them, I mean, I think I've seen them at conferences and stuff. They're in charge of a lot of things. Speakers sometimes. Um, they would never know who I am, <laughs> you know. But I've seen them and run into them in those places for yeah. sure. But no direct. They've been fancy for a long time. Contact. Yeah. 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 Good question though, Alan. Um, he also said, and concerning a speedy trial, I'm rather impressed that Kenosha parade trial was wrapped up within a year of incident. Do you know what that is? 
Is that a separate separate case? That's the man who drove through the parade. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in, um, what state was that in? I don't remember because that was a small Wisconsin? town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's because it was in Wisconsin. I don't know about Wisconsin and how they roll, but South Carolina, we're a little, we're a little bit slow on the uptake. And, uh, if, and I think, you know, I don't know the specific facts. I'm not the prosecutor there, but that case was a lot more. Um, they had the man who was driving the car through the parade. Yeah. And facts were, everybody saw the it. facts were clearer. I think it was just more of a defense about his mental stability and things like that. Um, but yeah. easier to put together than Alec and his alibi where he called all of his friends mm -hmm. for an hour. <laughs> yes. You know, that's the evidence is trickier and they've got to see it all and all that kind of stuff. It, well, I'm just so interested. About the parade, it was kind of, we're not looking at we're very cut a bunch of DNA evidence and fingerprints. Yeah. We've got the guy who, scenes. we've got the guy who did it and the weapon, the vehicle yeah. and so all the witnesses all is, and the video and all right. those things. That'll make it go faster for sure. Oh, that's right. Kenosha was the place. Daryl Brooks was his name. Yeah. Thank that you, was a Jenny. crazy trial. I watched some of that and it was, I can't believe that went to trial. That I think that alone shows you his, I don't know, that that was that defendant was insane. Yeah. But not legally insane. <laughs> That's all yeah, that was a horrible case. But yeah. I'm surprised that it went to trial and it wasn't a guilty plea, honestly. Well, thank you guys again. We are gonna wrap this up. Do you guys have any final thoughts? We need to do this more often. Yeah. yeah. Um I don't know. I'm just excited. Maybe not excited is the word, but like I'm intrigued, anxious, yeah, anxious to see um, how this shakes out. His sentence, if there'll be, I mean, we know there will be a, an appeal. Um, he's got a very capable legal team, um, so and he's got deep pockets. So we know that there will be an appeal, and then it'll be interesting to see um, the timeline of of Alex's trial going forward. Yeah, and I like to see, you know, I like I said, I don't like to see anybody go to prison, but. Um, I think for the victims, I'm happy for them that hopefully they feel like some sort of justice has been served. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they explained to 12 strangers what happened and they got to see what happened and and they were wronged and that was solidified and validated and all that stuff. So I'm happy that those victims got justice. Um, I think this. that watching victims um, get that justice, being able to tell their story, even if it's not guilty, whatever that is, is that. I mean, it always helps, but like just giving an opportunity for victims to get up. And and I think anytime um, we see something, especially of this level, and it all come to light and the public gets to know about it, I think there's there's always some kind of like justice in that. Yeah. yeah they get some sort of healing from done. that. Yeah. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much again, attorneys, um, Amy Lawrence and Sarah Austin here with the lovely law firm out of Myrtle Beach. Um, we're all over this. I say we, but really these two have been all over this from the get. So um, we love all the comments and questions. Keep those coming. And as more details come out, we will either hop on here or, or record another Carolina Justice Report. So keep your eye out for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. You can visit us on justiceislovely.com. Um, we're also on all of the, the social media outlets, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and we would love to hear from you. Thanks, you guys, for watching today. Thanks, guys. When life gets ugly, justice is